So, AI upscaling, FSR, DLSS or frame generation are exciting technologies that may or may not improve your gaming experience, but are only really available for the newest or modern GPUs. Well, depending on what you define as modern, of course, DLSS in the first generations is also available on the RTX 2000 series. And FSR or Intel's equivalent is also available on older AMD GPUs and also Nvidia GPUs. But I want to show you today how you can enable FSR and or basically a software equi equivalent and frame generation on any GPU as well as in any game. Before I show that to you, I have to say, of course, this is not going to deliver the same experience as DLSS because of course it is going to be a third party software utility that is doing that stuff instead of the GPU itself, for example, on the Nvidia side. On AMD side, it is all to do with software, but still this is going to look worse than AMD's or Nvidia's implementation for that matter. But it is still something that I would suggest you do or suggest you can do if you want a better gaming experience with, for example, a weaker graphics card, if you're running modern games and are not really satisfied with the FPS you're getting. When is this helpful? Of course, well, when you are running, for example, a 4K monitor, but you don't have a graphics card that is necessarily capable of pushing current games at 4K resolu resolutions to reasonable frame rates. I'm talking about 60 FPS because below that, PC gamers might not really like that as much. And uh, in my opinion, 30 FPS is just not enough to play a game well. And um, yeah, that's a bit of an issue. And what can you do? Well, you could overclock the card, you can reduce settings, but if you, for example, already are at like low or medium settings, the bump to lowest or even from medium to low might be a lot compared to just going to use some upscaling technology like FSR and using frame generation to also up your frames. There are a few caveats though. I would only recommend this if you already are able to achieve at least 45, 40 to 45 FPS, I'd say, because enabling frame generation and FSR takes a bit of a performance hit. It's not massive. It's going to be about 10 to 15 percent, depending on what settings you are using. But you have to take, uh, consider this because if you, for example, have a base FPS of 30 and enable frame generation, frame generation by two to get it to 60, the hit that you are going to take in terms of performance from, let's say, 30 to about 25 or 27 may make the input lag a bit worse uh, than you would actually like. So consider that and just keep that in the back of your head when watching this video and when trying this yourself. So first of all, I want to explain to you the tool we're going to be using. This is the lossless scaling tool. You can buy this from Steam for a couple of dollars or euros or whatever. There are multiple things you can actually select that will influence how the scaling works, how the scaling looks, how the frame generation works, how the frame generation looks, etc. I am going to show you the options I'm going to use for this you can try around with your for yourself there are multiple things that you can change and multiple things that will make it looking better or worse depending on the game depending on the art style of the game because that can have an influence on that first of all the scaling mode we have auto and we have custom auto is basically when you're using full screen we start a game in windowed mode in a resolution we want to scale from. So as I said, I'm starting the application or the, the game I want to run in windowed mode and um, that's for this selection. On the full screen one, you select basically the resolution you want to scale from. So my monitor is 3440 by 1440. So it is an UWQHD monitor, so it's 21 by nine. And this one would be the native resolution of that monitor. The thing you do now is you select the resolution you want to scale from. 
So for example, uh, you select a lower resolution like 2560 by 1080, that would be a 75% resolution of that. And if I now press Control, Alt and S, then the scaling will activate. The game will automatically scale up to my full screen resolution and also will full screen automatically. So that's how that works. This works obviously in any resolution. I could also go down to um, 1680 by 720. If I wanted to, if I really have a lot of performance issues and want to uh, scale it up by quite a lot. When you are using aspect ratio, it is scaling to the uh, aspect ratio that you have selected. So if you have selected 1080p, but using an ultra wide monitor, it will scale to 1080p and will leave black bars on the sides. Uh, so I don't think that will not make much sense. On custom mode, that's a bit more complicated or in depth. I don't really recommend that. I haven't tried around a lot with it. Uh, you can set the scale resolution factor and you can um, select resizing before scaling, which obviously makes sense because you want to run the game in full screen. And uh, yeah, that is a thing that you should enable if you are selecting this. But I would recommend auto and full screen if you are starting out because that's the easiest to configure. Scaling type FSR, there are a few things that you can use. Um, FSR is basically using the AMD way of upscaling, which is open source. So um, that's the one I would probably recommend. There are a few different things there. As I said, you might have to try around. It also depends on the game, what looks best. For example, on a game like Tiny Tina's Wonderlands or Borderlands or whatever, where the art style is very different than on something that looks more realistic, uh, different methods of upscaling might work better than FSR or worse actually on the other way around. Then you have the same options as you would with FSR in game or in games where it is na implemented natively, you can select the sharpness sharpness of the image. Then if you have a less powerful uh, graphics card, you could use the optimized version of uh, FSR. Um, as it says right here, uh, it has slightly worse quality, but as I said, optimized for uh, lower power GPUs. Then we have frame generation, the thing probably most of you are excited about. Uh, you can use, again, multiple different methods of the frame generation, but I would always stick to the newest one. Then we have the mode. This is where it gets exciting and this is also what's the choice on how many frames are generated in between the real frames. If you have, for example, 30 real frames and you click on 2x, then in between every normal frame, you generate one extra frame. So your frame rate basically is doubled or 2x as it says right here. So that will, if you have 30 FPS, be 60 FPS or 90 FPS if you are uh, running 3x. You can also use custom and here you can add up to 20, I think. And uh, so basically, you are inserting in between every real frame, you are uh, inserting 19 um, generate. Obviously, that's not really practical, but it is possible. For example, if you have a 360 or whatever hertz refresh rate and your game is running at like 70 to 80 FPS, well, yes, obviously 20 wouldn't make much sense, but you can could, could go up to like, I don't know, 5x or even 6x to get near that refresh rate of the monitor. Obviously, there are now also 960 hertz monitors, I believe. So that might even make more sense to go up to like 10x or something. Although then you are going to lose some other things uh, that I'm going to talk about or quality wise. Then we have the resolution scale. This is basically the resolution of the frames that are generated. The lower the resolution here, the lower the resolution of the generated frames are. And that can have a lot of influence, not only in, on the HUD, 
so the heads up display on most of the games um, which can look a bit weird with frame generation but also have a lot of uh, influence on the how the game actually looks when using frame generation i would keep this at at least 50 to 60 if you can if performance allows it keep it at more the issue is here the more frames you generate and the higher the resolution scale is the more power is going to draw from your gpu or the more frames it is going to pull away from your real frames because the gpu has to calculate those generated frames so for example when you would start out at 30 for example and you would calculate for example four frames and the resolution scale is at 100 percent you might end up at like 20 real frames only and that's kind of not ideal in this scenario i would leave this at like 50 to 60 and that is the reason why i only recommend this if you already are able to achieve at least 40 to 50 fps but that's, but i'd say 40 is probably the minimum you should be able to achieve in that game before you activate a uh, frame generation because otherwise the input lag does get bigger because the input lag is obviously relying on the actual frames and not the generated frames. Rendering is dependent on how or dependent on looks. The sync mode is not ob obviously not really only dependent on frame generation but for example if you have a high refresh rate uh, display you want to sync for example the uh, maximum FPS to the refresh rate of your monitor. You know it as VSync on a normal game. That's just the same thing, but it makes sense to, for example, uh, sync them to a half, third, or fourth, depending on your refresh rate of the monitor. Uh, the frame latency kind of. I haven't tried around much with it, so try around for yourself. You may get a better results with input lag if you lower this or if you keep it at one, but may get better performance results if you um, use a higher number like two or three, but uh, you'll have to try around with yourself. That's it for the explanation of how the software works. I'm going to now demonstrate this and uh, in a few games and show you the frame counter and also how it looks. So, as I said, I'm going to show you a few demonstrations. First of all, I want to show you the difference between lossless scaling and the actual FSR that is implemented into the games. Uh, and you can see FSR quality, which in this case has the same resolution, looks a lot better. So, just use FSR if it is implemented. And if it's not, yes, you can use the FSR scaling from the lossless scaling tool but fsr will always look better then we come on to the games where we just try the frame generation in this case we have tiny tina's wonderlands which is a bit of a, a bit of a worst case looks wise um, so i'm going to demonstrate that um, because of the uh, comic graphics or the the cell shaded look uh, it does get a bit weird when the fps get lower for example here we have around 20 fps which is ultra details um, ultra wide resolution unfortunately i wasn't able to capture here so that it's is why i filmed it from my monitor but you can see what i mean and um, i just now turned frame generation on and as you can see it is much smoother although the problem is here you get a lot of artifacts in this game especially at as i said lower frame rates although as i also said you should not really activate it under 35 40 fps if we for example activate fsr in game and then use frame generation like we show or like i show here where we actually start out at about 35 fps and then activate it then the experience gets much better the HUD still has some glitchiness and some visual bugs, but still everything else looks a lot better now. And actually I would recommend it like this and it's pretty usable. The input lag as well isn't as bad here, but for people that are used to higher refresh rates, you may want higher FPS and go from there. But for my purposes this would be playable and for somebody that is used to consoles 
this is also totally gonna be fine. Looking at a different game, which is a bit of a better scenario, um, that's Hogwarts Legacy because it's a third person and not a not cell shaded and a bit of a slower game. It doesn't have as much of an effect on the visual quality. As you can see here, we are at ultra details. We have ray tracing on. That's one of the things you can turn on some goodies like ray tracing and through the frame generation get a bit more frames or a bit more of a fluid experience. And then especially in like uh, this kind of a game, it's not too bad if you have a bit of a drop in input lag. And uh, as you can see here, it looks much smoother. And as you don't move the camera as much, I'd say you don't have these visual artifacts as much as for example, in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands or in other ego shooters or like first person games. Other thing that you can do, which I just demonstrated in that game, is you can turn up the uh, frame generation to 20x, so you generate 19 frames in between, which looks kind of weird. We're starting out at 140, 120 FPS and are going to about 500. The thing is here, this really, really drops your performance to about 50, 60 FPS. So if you're doing that, or if you are doing higher frame generation numbers, like five plus, then it's not really that recommended in my opinion, but because it first of all looks kind of wonky and it sucks a lot of performance, but it still works. Another notorious game for not running too terribly well is BeamNG Drive. And in BeamNG or in racing games in general, this is kind of a best case because the camera movement isn't as drastic as in shooters or third person games, etc. So uh, you don't really see much of a visual difference here. And it is mostly just an increase in fluidity. Although personally, from a gameplay perspective, it doesn't also doesn't not make a massive change in my opinion. But still, it's nice to have and uh, nice to get the more fluid experience. I hope you understood what I was explaining. If you have any questions, if you liked the video, like it and uh, any questions, as I said, down in the comments below. And as always, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.